Welcome back. This week we're going to go with my 390U. This is the scaled down version of the White Girl. Um, there's a couple of changes in this one as far as materials used. We go into some craft fur, um, the UV puller. Change a couple of things up. Overall the design still the same. It's just a uh, couple of different materials used in this one and one different hook we go. I'll get into that one more as we get to that back hook as we start talking about that one but um, like I said this one's just a scaled down version it, the the original was tied on a 2 and a 1 Daiichi 2461 um, it, it got pretty big <laughs> a lot of good motion in that but it was kind of limited is to, you know, I mean, fish you can target. Um, obviously, I mean, you can always pick up, you can move a lot of fish on a big fly. A lot of times you'll just, there. It, it's more of a location type thing, you know, unless you get into the true predatory fish where they're just out to eat just about anything. Um, you, you can be limited on the bigger flies. So scale this one down a little bit, it seems to pick up a few more fish. Uh, may not be moving the bigger ones, but you, you just never know. Uh, I don't have enough data on that one just yet to say for certain that that's the case. But to get started on this one, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And we're going to bend this front hook first. Um, this is the unique portion of this fly here. Let me get zoomed in to where I like it. That looks pretty good. This is the unique portion. If you watched the video on the white girl, you know that... Uh, there's a pretty aggressive bend on this and it affects the way that the fly swims. Um, so what, what we're going to do here is if you watch the bending hooks streamer video or the tying tips I went through on how I bend my hooks and you know it's not a complicated process. Just going to heat this thing up a little bit right at about the one third point is where I want this bend. And then what I'm going to do is just take this and bend it right toward the camera, probably going close to a 30 degree bend on this hook. And you can see that right there. There's the bend that we're after. And then I'm just going to take this and go slightly down, probably a 5 to 10 degree bend down. So it has a nice little rounded effect to it. And it really affects the way, along with how it's trimmed, it really affects how this one swims. So I mean, it, it can be a little bit challenging to, to tie this deer hair on, um, but this bend is your reference point that you use right here. So all of your material, your deer hair collar is gonna start right on that bend. It's going straight back. The rest of this is gonna be a deer hair head. You get two stacks on the top and bottom. That finishes it out, but we'll get to that one hopefully not too long from now depending on how much I decide to ramble and screw up but for the back hook that I had alluded to earlier I changed this up um, before when I tied this like I said it was just on a 2461 Daiichi I changed this out and I went with the uh, the 1850 Daiichi so the flat eye um, you know, it's a it's a vertical eye instead of a regular horizontal, and uh, it just makes tying this back hook in a little bit easier. It makes it easier to control everything. So, I decided to go with the 1850. Uh, to get started on this, we're going to do this in a little rainbow trout version today. We're going to stop just shy of the point of our hook, not all the way back to the barb like we typically do, and then I have just two. Uh, schlopping feathers here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and marry these up. Typically I like using the saddles. I think they I, I, I think they just look a little bit better but I'm running a little bit short on them. been tying quite a few of these patterns here lately and I got just a little short. I mean I, I still have them but none of them really had the look or the profile that I was after, so we're just going to sub some slop in here today. We're going to go ahead and get this measured out, and likely have to wet those feathers down a little bit. They just don't quite want to line up for me. 
So we're going to get these measured out about two times the length of the hook is going to be what we'll use for our length on the tail. And get that in the ballpark there. If you want, typically what I do is I, if when I'm tying a bunch of these in a row, I have a mark back here on the on the vise, and then you know that way I get the consistency that way. But we're just going to eyeball this one. It's going to be in the ballpark. So we're just going to get these tied in deceiver style. Uh, going straight back for us, everything looks pretty clean right there. A lot of times they will have a tendency to roll on you or want to go from one side to the next. These ones went on there pretty smooth, so no need to play around with those too much. Next thing, I'm going to take just some flash here. This is kind of like a pearl, but when it gets turned to the side, it has like a bluish purple tint to it. Uh, you can use whatever color you want, really. I mean, this is just the one that I picked for this one. The one that I did before had blue and purple and some greens in it, so uh, we're just going to change this up and go, go with this color here, see how it turns out. So I got probably 8 to 10 strands here. I don't know, stay on the safe side, we'll call it maybe 6 to 10. And then I'm going to advance my thread up just a little bit. And then go ahead and get this tied in. You can take it down each side if you want. I kind of just lay this right over the top and it's going to go where it wants to go anyhow. Um, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. If you want to take it down each side or whichever way you want to lay these things, eventually these, these fibers are going to lay back how they want to anyhow once you get it wet. So there's our start right there with the tail. Probably could have taken and split these just a little bit. I got way too many on the one side, but like I said, as soon as it gets wet, these things are gonna they're gonna be on whichever side they want to anyhow. I'll help this out just slightly just for camera purposes. Too much flash on the one side there. Get a little distracting. So there we have our fibers tied in and our tail's going straight back. Now when we when you're tying this one in, just remember that the hook's going to be pointing toward the camera because this flat eye when we tie this in. So always remember that you're going to put your dominant color or your dark color on the top when you do these. So I'm going to make sure that my olive is on the top, the white's going to be on the bottom when I tie these in. So next up on this I'm going to take some craft fur And this is just regular olive craft fur. Before when I did the original white girl, it was marabou that I used. Um, this kind of cut down on the bulk a little bit. It helped with the motion some, I think. And it fills the fly out just a little bit more because you can get more length out of this craft fur than you can the, the marabou. So I decided to use this. We're going to go probably three quarters of the way back on this one. I'm going to flip this to the side and we're going to reverse tie these. So get your three quarter mark. Go ahead and get this tied in. This one can be a little bit tricky on this side because you have the, the hook point that wants to fight you just a little bit. So we'll go ahead and get that tied in and secured. I don't want to get too crazy about trimming all these short fibers up back there. I'm, I'm fine with leaving them how they're sitting right now. And then the next thing we're going to do is grab our white and we're going to do the same thing. So take this white, run this through the comb if you want, if you need to. Typically I find with a craft fur you really don't have to. You can really run your fingers through it and get the majority of the stuff out. And then I'll just try and line up these longer tips. Right, like this. That way we have everything pretty well even. Now I'm going to set this the same length 
as I have the olive. You get one loose, second loose, and then just pull straight down, go ahead and tighten this up and you're good to go. Like I said, once again, I'm not too awful concerned about getting all of those separated and getting them set in the right direction or, you know, getting all of the small stuff out. It's all going to get covered up here on this reverse tie anyhow. So, as soon as I can get all of this stuff peeled back, we'll be moving. That one just gets a little bit difficult there with the that hook point it can be a little bit difficult getting everything to cooperate for you so there you go we have the tail f sticking out you got the flash coming and then the uh, craft fur covering that up when this gets wet it really slicks back and just really gives a nice lifelike appearance next up we're going to take our UV puller This is pink, just a straight pink. Well, yeah, this one is UV. I got regular UV and then the pink. This one, if you've watched any of the ones where I've worked with the this polar snail before, um, this is a lot more sparse than the gold or the silver. It's just there's a le less fibers per inch, so it is a little bit more sparse, but really I mean the majority of it's going to be covered up anyhow the only thing that we're looking for is a little bit of paint to come through so go ahead and leave yourself a little bit of extra room because we still have the two marabou stacks that we want to tie in there and then we're going to get this stuff all straightened out try and go about the same try and get all of your fibers going the same direction that way you're not trapping too many of them we got a little bump right there that we're going to work through we go one, two more wraps right over top of that, kind of even that bump out, get the transition coming forward. Just kind of working my way through here every third or fourth wrap, give a quick anchor on this, quick pinch, straighten out the fibers, make sure everything's going in the direction that you want them. One, two, and we'll call that good right there. trap the couple of fibers you can go ahead and run a bodkin through that and pick them out a little bit everything seems pretty good here so we're not going to worry about that too much one one little spot there that was a little sparse but we'll live with it go ahead and just build up some thread here clean that up just slightly and then the next thing that I'm going to do I pre-sorted this marabou that way I wouldn't have to go through and try and find the best stuff for this fly we're going to go ahead and get our marabou tied in here. If you have just the woolly bugger packs, that's the stuff that I prefer. The, you know, a little bit webbier, it's going to be a little bulkier. And I'm going to take this just past, we'll probably go a quarter of the way past, um, or a quarter of the length of the craft fur. Just kind of lengthen that out a little bit. It fills out the body, covers up some of the pink. And we're tying this on the same side, obviously, as we did with the olive craft fur. Get a couple good secure wraps on that, and we're good to go. Next, we're going to take the white on the underside. Grab this white, measure, measure it out, same length as your olive. Just get a quick reference there. It's pretty good. And then we'll get this one tied in, finish off this back hook. Good. 
to go. Ooh. And a hook and a thumb. Feels good. Quick whip finish, good to go. If you want to throw some glue on there, go ahead, feel free. There's our back hook. We're going to get the front tied in. Got a little ash residue off of where we burnt that hook there. And I'm going to go ahead and get our wire tied in. I'm going to swap over to this tan thread. I use this. If you watched any of the videos where I tie my wire in, I, I try and stay away from using the GSB just because it, you can chew a lot of thread up real quick. So I go with my junk thread. Oh, where's my wire? So with this wire, I stop this, you can see where my thread's at in relation to that bend. I stop it about an eighth of, one, eighth of an inch away from the bend. That way when I fold this stuff over, I'm not going to be tempted to rush toward that bend. I'm still going to have plenty of room to get my deer hair collar in there. Bring that back just a little bit. I'm going to fold this over and work this back that for the taper. Now with this one it's going to wind up pretty good where we forward tie or reverse tie our uh, craft fur in. That gap should be eliminated. So it should be a lot smoother of a tran transition. I'm going to take this and Give it a quick clip and then find a bead here and my trusty old shoe polish tin there. I've had that thing since I first started tying. I, who knows how long that thing's been around. It's been there for a bit. So now you've got your back hook facing toward the camera in this one. On the last one when I tied this, it was I, I, I fought it the entire time. I couldn't get the dang thing to stay because it was, you know, I was, I was trying to do something. I was trying to keep the back hook at a 90 degree. Well, it wasn't meant to be at a 90, and you know, I mean, it still worked. It just made it a lot tougher when I was tying it in. So when I saw these hooks, I was like, oh, this is perfect. It'll work out great. And it has resolved a lot of frustration a lot of cussing on this pattern for sure so now we'll go ahead and get the rubber band in there get that thing to sit still for us and then we'll bring this to the front just shy where I left off with the the, the previous uh, wire Peel that back, and I'm just going to trim this stuff off if it'll let me. And then back to the gel spun. Get over here. This pattern's going to be a bit lengthy, so I apologize in advance. Gel spun, start it up again, and then we'll work our way to the back. Now, it doesn't, it's not sitting how it should right now, because, you know, the rubber band's kind of kicking this thing off to the side, it's showing you more of the olive. But this olive will be straight up and down on this back hook, so it's going right back like that. Um, so we're going to follow that same path on the front hook. This, this 
this portion is easier to work with on the front hook than it was on the back because you're not fighting that gap on the hook trying to get everything to line up perfectly. This is just more of a traditional way of tying this in with the hook going up and down instead of east and west. So we'll get this same thing. Try and even these fibers out a little bit. This you want a little bit more material so if you have to go ahead and grab a little bit more. I could, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to cut just a little bit more out. I want this to be a little bit thicker than the back. So I'm going to take just another little bit. Get that cleaned out in the comb. That looks better. One, I want to make sure that you know I'm progressing as I go forward is in terms of thickness and two it covers this connection a little bit better and you got a little bit more material to work with so the same thing we're gonna go probably three-quarter of the way back our marabou get this tied in trying to keep all the olive on the top portion of the hook Trying to find a good spot to grab from on this craft fur. This stuff can make a mess in a heartbeat, but it does make a pretty good looking fly. I can already tell I don't have enough, so I'm just going to grab a little bit extra right now. Get out of there. There we go get that clump all together and then we're going to go ahead and clean this out and comb, get, pull this through. There's all the junk that comes out of there and it's not going to be used. And then same thing, go ahead and try and line your tips up. I don't spend a ton of time doing this, I just get them, you know, pretty consistent. Uh, I don't stack or anything like that, it would be really tough to stack these, but I don't spend a ton of time worrying about the alignment of these tips. I just want them all pretty consistent. Now this this one can be a little bit trickier because you're working around that hook bend or you're working around the, the point of the hook but you can just split those fibers right around it before you tie it in and it makes it a little bit easier. So I just took my fibers and I, I, let, I let the hook point split it for me and then it just lays where we want it. Same thing, trim that stuff off, and then we're going to peel this back. Get your fibers working through that hook again. Make sure we're covering up our connection, and then just go ahead and tie this deceiver style. couple secure wraps on that everything looks good everything looks pretty good see we have our connection covered up real nice with that little bit of extra that we took from the craft fur that connections basically masked the entire way have a nice clean break between our white and our olive um, I will take just a touch of glue on this and I'll butt it right up against that craft fur there. Just a little bit of reassurance. Get back there. There we go. Same thing, we're going to tie in our pink polar chenille, and I'm going to leave this, uh, stuff came undone on me, I'm leaving this just shy of where I left off when I was uh, tying in our wire. I have a good reference point here for where I want to stop my polar chenille, keep in mind 
that we do have A little bit too bulky on that one. There we go. Keeping in mind that we do have marabou to tie in before we get to the deer hair work. So we don't want to rush that in any way or it's going to make completing that head an absolute mess. A couple of wraps here, keeping our material moving forward, trying not to trap too awful much. This stuff's a little funky here in the way it was in the package. I probably should have straightened it out a little bit to make it easier to work with, but I think we're still good. Alright, we got that tied off. Get that stuff out of the way. Now, have all our polar chenille laying toward the back. Same thing with the marabou on this one. If you want, you can go craft fur again. I like the marabou. It's a little, uh, a little more full than the craft fur. It gives you a little bit more motion. And then same thing. Lay this about a quarter of the way back where you tied in your craft fur. One, two, three. Tight pull. Everything's good. Now you can see. Um, these fibers right here, the ones that I just trimmed off, the ones that are sticking forward, they're just barely covering that bend, so I know I'm right where I want to be. My thread right now is right before where the bend starts. Everything's good. It, actually, there's a good reference right there if you can see. Right before that bend starts, that's where I have my feathers tied in. Everything's right where we want, and it's going to make it easy to work with this deer hair. Well relatively easy being that we're working on a bent hook it's a bent hook that's going away from you it's it's a little challenging after you get a couple of these tied it becomes a lot easier for sure now the same thing with our white marabou same length as the olive one two get a third really cinched down on that get that white out of our way boom We got the white going back, just how we want it. When this thing gets wet, this stuff just kind of masks, and the only thing that you can really see is that pink lateral line going down. Um, it does come through some on the top, but for the most part, it's it's just a lateral line going the whole way back, so it, it does look pretty sharp. Kind of gives that juvenile rainbow stripe going back there. Um, you know, it's something that just pops a little bit. Oh, where's my stacker? There we go. So for this portion, the only thing that we're tying in is the collar, and that's it. That collar is going to sit right before or right on the bend of our hook. Don't start it past the bend. You can go on the bend if you want, but preferably it's behind the bend. That's where you start your you start your collar. So I'm just going to get this cleaned up as best as I can, and then we'll get this stacked, get our collar tied in. There we go. Give it a few quick taps, get everything nice and lined up. And you're after a pretty thick collar here. Probably not as thick as what you would do with a dungeon or a cougar, but you, you still want a, you know, a decently thick collar on this one. So we'll go ahead and get this measured out. We're going to go about halfway back the marabou stack is what we want for that. I could probably go a little bit thicker on this one, but I think I'm going to call it good. Oh, dropping craft fur. and get this tied in one two third and we're good 
flatten that collar out a little bit, give it that sort of half moon effect. One thing that I didn't mention that I should have, uh, I should have done it on camera, is I clipped that stuff not using the excess that would have been, you know, hanging over. I just clipped that excess and then that way I'm not tempted to use that in the head. It makes it a little bit difficult. It can wind up being a little messy, honestly. And then you wind up getting an air gap and it just, just doesn't quite do what you want it to. So now on this, I'm going to switch over to the GSP 200. I started doing this a lot on the on the deer belly hair, um, even some of the you know regular Primo strips. I started switching over to the GSP 200. It seems like you get a little bit more control, and you don't have the tendency because I really wrenched down on this stuff. Um, you won't cut through it. Well, I shouldn't say won't. It, you're less likely to. Um, I don't want someone going all Superman on me and cutting through deer hair and calling me out. So, less likely is the correct word, I guess, there. Now, this is where it gets tricky again. Like I said, we're working on the bend of a hook. It makes it a little difficult. And then also... what we want is a nice clean break from our olive and our white. We want a nice lateral line on that olive and white. It doesn't matter, it's just, you know, aesthetically I, I like the way that it looks, so I try and keep everything nice and nice and clean. So we'll go one, two, and I'm going to work this through. I'm going to get a third in here. I'm going to release all of this pull this up. I don't want this to spin, so I'm just going to pull this stuff up before I give a quick pinch and then it flares it out. You can see on the underside I have a nice clean portion to work with this white. So then I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to grab my white deer hair. Uh, quick clip. This olive is a little bit shorter than what I really prefer it to be. I'd like it to be, you know, half an inch to an inch longer, but um, it's usable. It's it's on the borderline of being too short, though. It is on the border of being too short. So now, same thing with the white. And you can, you can flip this over on the other side if you want to. I actually got... There we go. I have one. One, th one thread just work its way through and try to mess my whole pattern up. So now I'm going to get one loose wrap. A second loose wrap and all I'm doing is getting things set how I want it right now and then a third I'm gonna just start to where this begins to flare things up and then what I'm gonna do is bring my thread up I'm pulling straight up on this and you can see where it flares this out things are nice and flared out the olive and the white are staying separated Really make sure you get a good thick wrap on this because it does want to, it, it has the tendency to want to spin on you just slightly. So we'll get this forward. Take our white and olive, make sure that they're staying somewhat separated for the most part. Get a couple of good wraps right there, and we're good to go. Just wanted to rotate just slightly on me. We're still good. I got a couple white pieces coming into the olive. I'm going to get fired on this one. It's not going to be as clean as I want it. Same thing, we're going to go back to the olive. 
and it's going to start getting even trickier because we're working going away from us now with the deer hair or with the bend of the hook it's coming away from us so you kind of have to lean around and watch where you're tying everything in it gets a little tricky but we'll make it work same thing get this set in here and before I do that I'm peeling everything back with my ring finger and my thumb all that white hair is out of the way now you get one wrap around this bundle get a second we're starting to flare boom there's our third pinch down we're good to go we still have a little bit of room underneath here to get our white still looking pretty good grab another stack of white deer hair cleaned up we'll cut off the tips pulling all of this previous white back getting this thing nice and centered then I'm working right through the same thread path that I did with the olive two and then a third pull down and I don't know if I'm gonna like that completely I lost a couple of the fibers there and they didn't flare exactly how I wanted them to I think it's gonna be all right once we trim this everything should be good we'll just get one more a little bit of an extra flare on that last one and we're good I don't like these being you know, I won't take the packer like I will with a D&D &D or anything like that and really get this stuff compressed in there. All I want, I want it still pretty loose. That way it's not going to be like a cork on water. But we do treat this with some, some UV, so it helps with the swim a little bit. If you do get it, you know, a little bit too compressed, that's fine. I mean, it's once it's treated with the UV, it acts like a, you know, a, a repellent anyhow. It's not like you're able to get water inside of this head. But if it's if it's too compressed and then you throw the UV on top of it, it just the the head of it wants to kind of stay up a little bit. Um, so I try not to get that stuff too awful compact in there rambling probably not making a bit of sense oh where in the heck did I put my cone there we go covering up with the UV so we're just gonna go ahead and flare this out a little bit I can see some olive hairs in there that are gonna aggravate me some just go ahead and comb through this, get everything standing up in the same direction. And then we need a razor blade. Unprepared today. So, with this one it's kind of difficult. You kind of have to bring your body around and trim this off to the side. But remember that you have the bend of this hook going this direction and then back. So follow this bend with your first cut. This is just a broad cut, or a, uh, you know, not a real precise cut. Just make a overall shape to it is what you want. Don't try and get everything perfect right away. And then you have this nice little oval right here. And I can see some olive hairs in there. I, Told you I was gonna get fired from this pattern. The ones that I did before, they were almost perfect. Figures they weren't on film. So now with this one, you start getting a little bit more aggressive on your cuts, and I'll explain what I'm doing here shortly. 
as soon as I get this out of my way here. So with this one, I took a flat cut, and I know you can't really see it right now if I turn this. Maybe you guys will be able to see that a little better. You can see the flat cut that I took right here on this side with the hook bend, and that really helps with the swim in this pattern. Now on the opposite side, I'm going to have this more rounded. So I'm just coming up through here. Giving this nice rounded appearance to the back portion of this. Same thing, I'm going to come on this side now and I can make a little bit more aggressive of a cut. Get that nice and rounded. Get out of there. Round this off. Going right back into the marabou. Don't get too aggressive and chop it off, but you want to push right back into that marabou so you have a nice break there. Same thing up over top on this one, giving that nice rounded look to it. Still have our collar nice and clean there. And I'm going to stop it at this here because I can, I can trim on this thing all day, I'm trying to get it exactly how I want it. I said I was going to stop, but I didn't. Couldn't help myself. So there we go. We got a couple just runaway hairs here that we can really clean up and just touch these up with the scissors. There we go. Things are looking pretty good. There you can see the overall look that we're after, and I'll spin the vise around one more time. There's the look that we're after. So you got the rounded edge on this side. You got the nice flat portion right here. And what this does is it just catches that bend. Or it, it makes the bend more uh, prevalent to catch water. So when you pull on this thing, it shoots it straight down at that angle and then the back kind of just flutters and it'll actually give like a half rotation on a horizontal plane. Now, I'm going to take a just real small flat cut right here on this side where I want to put my eye. It just seems to help it adhere to the head a little bit better. So all I do is just take one quick little trim on this, just enough to get the eye to set to where it's not going to be on sitting on the rounded edge. Grab this eye, and I still have a little bit of trimming to do on this one. I'm not completely happy with it. It's a little bit bigger than I would like it, but uh, I'll do that after the fact. I'll get these eyes set on here, talk through a little bit of what I do with the UV, and then we'll call it good. I won't subject you to everything before I take the picture. You guys have suffered long enough listening to me stumble through this one so we'll bring this around get it on the exact or get it on the same side here drop a dab of super glue on this set your eye there we go everything looks pretty good we'll give this quick rotation here and then I'll bring this back to the camera side. There you can see the overall look that we're after. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just round off these edges a little bit because there's a clean cut right there. And I'll round off this edge as well. 
I haven't noticed a huge difference, but you know, it just it looks a little cleaner that way. So sometimes I will do it. Other times I'll just leave it as is. And then the last thing that I'll do on this is I'll take some UV. I use the thick on this portion. I'll take the UV and I'll run over here, especially on this inside. I want that inside to uh, repel as much water as possible, or not allow, yeah, repel water. There we go. English is my first language, I swear. Um, you know, and then sometimes I'll go over the back side as well, but the main portion that I really focus on is this inside section. That way it dives just a little bit more aggressively and uh, gives a little bit more motion to the fly. But there she is. There's the 390U. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments on this one, as always, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. If you stuck around this long, thank you. <laughs> I know I rambled on that one for a little while and took a little bit longer than it should have. But uh, like I said, questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.